So we have some fairly simple uh, state tree behavior for our character now. Uh, we are using a bunch of different states with tasks and evaluators and values and a lot of different stuff. But there's one thing that is a little bit lacking with state trees uh, compared to behavior trees. And that is that there's no real way to uh, put a entry condition uh, with a cooldown on it. You can't say, hey, keep this uh, entry condition uh, locked for X amount of time after it has been initially uh, entered. And I kind of just want to set up uh, a fairly basic way uh, around that, honestly. This will require you uh, to have a specific context actor class um, that has some variables set up to work with this, uh, just due to the sheer fact that we need to access a variable that we're going to be making on this class. And that's a variable that we can't send through uh, as a reference we need to access it directly. So let's make that. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a new variable and I'll call this uh, cooldowns. And I'm going to make that of type uh, name or string. Let's just do string for now. I think name technically performs a little bit better, but it's not that important. And we're going to make it a map and it will have values of float. So it's going to be a string and float map. Then we're going to make a, a condition to use that. So what we'll do is we'll make a state tree condition and we'll call this uh, STC cooldown. And the annoying thing about state tree conditions is that they are read only blueprints. You can't set variables within this, but maps are actually kind of a special thing because you can edit them from a read only blueprint. So we can do our uh, test receive uh, condition and we'll make a variable for our actor. And we're going to make that specifically of our type state tree character because of the map that we made on that. It's going to be the context variable because we just want to automatically uh, provide that in. And with that, we can now get our cooldowns and we can check if we can find a certain cooldown. And this is going to be a variable as well. So cooldown name. We'll just make that a editable field. If we can't find any cooldown, that means that we'll have no cooldown on that name. Like we haven't entered that cooldown yet. So that's what this bottom pin is, is telling us whether or not it could find that. If it could not find that, we just add it uh, as a new one. So we add to it our cooldown name and we're going to be adding that with the current game time in seconds plus a amount of cooldown time so this is a cooldown that starts from the moment you enter this state from the moment you first check it if you pass the cooldown it's going to immediately start ticking down it's not a cooldown that necessarily will start ticking down from when you exit the state and you have finished a task we can make a task to do that though in a moment which we will do but by default, if you're just using this condition, uh, it will only work from entry of the state. Or I suppose it will work on exit if you use this condition as an exit condition for a transition, but that would be kind of weird. Anyway, we're going to promote this to a variable and this will be uh, the cooldown time, which also will be exposed. So if we don't already have it, uh, we add it in and then we return true. If we do already have it, we just want to check, hey, is this less than our game time? And we just add in a branch for that as well. Uh, because if it is, that means that the cooldown uh, has been there long enough and we are allowed to enter this again now. So if it is, we just add it again. If you add a thing into a map that already exists with that like key, in this case, the name, it will just overwrite it. So we can just use the adding node here uh, in both scenarios. And that will just update uh, the time for it. Uh, but if this has not, in fact, uh, returned true, so if our cooldown is not less than our game time in seconds, uh, we return false. So we just untick this and we return false. So now we have a condition that effectively checks uh, whether or not a certain actor has a certain cooldown, almost in a tag-like system. So we can say, instead of doing a, a waiting task here for chase, we can do this as an entry condition now. And we can say, hey, cooldown. We can say the cooldown name is chase. 
and the cooldown time is i was gonna do 15 seconds but then i mistyped and now it's 14 seconds so short which also means that uh, the jump now doesn't have anywhere to go actually so maybe that wasn't a great way to do it we can just make the jump go back to a root that's fine so we just default transition so now what this will do is when it starts chasing me it adds that value to uh, that map and when it tries to chase me again it will check whether or not the current game time uh, has exceeded that uh, like threshold time and if it doesn't it's just gonna patrol so now you'll be able to see that he uh, does his thing, but when I get within a certain range, he uh, comes close to me, and then he jumps, and then he waits for a moment, and then he'll start doing all this again, but he won't start chasing me again until his cooldown of, I think, 15 seconds, I changed it anyway, uh, is all up, at which point he will start chasing me again. So he now has a cooldown on his chasing behavior. But what if we want to also make a task where we can say, hey, extend that cooldown now. Because right now we can only extend the cooldown if the cooldown has been passed, but maybe we want to be able to have a task that also uh, extends the cooldown. So for instance, on finishing a certain state, we want to extend that cooldown. Well, that's super easy to do as well. So let's do that. We can make a task, blueprint uh, task or state tree base, and call that uh, stt set cooldown. And here we're just going to copy over a couple of things, actually. We're going to copy over uh, the actor. We're going to copy over the cooldown name. We're going to copy over the uh, cooldown time that we're going to be adding to it. So we can set this up in a handful of different ways. We can set it up to say, hey, reset the cooldown. So the cooldown will be X amount of seconds from now. Or we can set it up to add to the existing cooldown instead. Uh, I think we're just going to make a, a tick box that will let us decide what we do. So uh, reset cooldown with time or something like that. So by default, it's going to be adding to it. But if we take this to be true, it will instead uh, set the cooldown to be whatever we put in here so that can also make it shorter as a result so that can be quite interesting uh, you can set this up to be either on uh, exit or on enter i'm going to do this personally on exit because i think that makes the most sense for setting a cooldown but you can do this on enter as well if you wanted to so here we first and foremost check uh, if the cooldown timer uh, should be reset or if it should be added and let's give these things a couple of categories. So we uh, give this the category for context, for the actor itself, of course. And then these two uh, don't need any categories. And with that, we can kind of just copy some stuff over here. So let's just copy over everything and then we'll delete everything that we don't need. How about that? Because we need most of this. We still need the actor uh, uh, cooldowns. We need to check whether or not we can find it. Because if we cannot find it, no matter what happens, we need to just add it anew. So that's actually the first thing uh, that we do before we even check whether or not we want to reset it because um, there's nothing to reset or, or to add if it doesn't exist yet. <laughs> so if it doesn't exist yet, uh, we add it. If it does exist, we check if we want to reset it or if we want to add to it. So if you want to reset it, what we do is we also just hook back up to this node. We don't really need this one uh, or this one. Because resetting effectively just means getting the current game time and adding to it our current cooldown time. And adding to it uh, the amount of cooldown time that we want to do. So that's effectively the same thing as just setting up an entirely new uh, value. But what we can do as well, we can use this adding node, hook everything up properly, like the cooldown name, and then we want to add a new amount of time to it. So from that, we are going to take the finding node that we have here, and add to it the cooldown time instead. So if we're not resetting, that means that surely we must be adding. So we go to this one. And that's everything there is to it. We don't need to uh, finish task because there's a running on uh, exit anyway. And if you want to be able to like make that variable as well, uh, we can call this like run on exit. Ideally, maybe make this like an enum instead to make it a little bit more clear but for now we'll just make this like run on exit and then we do enter state as well and we can just hook both of these up to like a uh, branch like this 
and check run on exits. And if run on exits is true with exits or is false with enter, we do that. So now it can run on either enter or exit, depending on the value that this variable has. I'm going to set the default value for it to true though. And the same thing with reset cooldown time. I think I'm going to set the default value for that to true. Cooldown time, uh, don't need a default value. So now we have a task that we can add into any state on our behavior tree uh, that can run on enter or on exit that will either add to or reset the target time for our cooldown as well. And that can actually work fairly interestingly because we can say any time that we enter the uh, patrol state or the move to state, because we never actually re-enter the patrol state seemingly. So every time we enter the move to state, we can add this task here which is set cooldown. Our cooldown name was chase. This is case sensitive. So it might be a good idea uh, to make this into a parameter if you're going to be referencing it in multiple places or just copy paste it. But just making a parameter is probably easier. Now it's the other one to chase. Yes, I did actually use the uppercase there. Still, we <laughs> just copy it over just to be sure. And we can say the cooldown time is actually going to be minus two and we don't want to reset it. And we don't want to run on exit, we want to run on entry. So that means anytime it enters the move to state now, it's going to reduce our cooldown time by two seconds. Didn't see that coming, did you? But that is entirely possible. So this is now a, a task and a condition that can really work together fairly well. And they all just work based on these strings. Or again, you can use name variables if you prefer. The only downside is that it is limited to using this actor contacts class because we need to directly uh, interface with that map. You might be saying, but you can make like an interface uh, to get that map. Sadly, you cannot. Uh, if you're using C++, you might be able to, uh, because you can actually get a pointer to that specific map. But if you use a interface uh, function call in Blueprint, it's going to pass it through by value, meaning that it's going to give you a copy of the map. So you can't actually edit the original map through an interface call. You need to actually do it uh, through getting the actual actor and getting the actual cooldown map from that actor, meaning that you do need to like effectively do that cast, right? So you're going to be stuck with having to use like this base class uh, that has that variable on it. That's the only real downside to it. Just during editing, uh, listening back to this, I wanted to cut in real quick to explain that you still can set this up to use an interface. What you would need to do is you would need to move pretty much all the code that we just took from the condition and or the task and put it in the implementation of the interface on your various different classes that might need to work with the school downs and have their own maps. And then for the interface function uh, that is going to be used for the condition, it just will return a Boolean variable, uh, whether it's true or false, whether you can succeed or not. That way you can still use this on a bunch of different uh, classes and you can still make this fairly generic uh, without them having to share a parent class, which might be an issue for a variety of reasons. It would be ideal if you could just have a cooldown functionality on these things provided by Epic itself. That is a little bit more like flexible. But just about every other method of checking this uh, doesn't quite work. Because if you just uh, make it check that within the same condition, there's the issue that these conditions are objects in and of themselves. And when uh, the state is no longer active, those get discarded. And when you re-enter the state, it creates new ones. Ideally, you would be able to use parameters instead, but setting parameters is a bit of an issue. Through C++, I think it is possible. Through Blueprint, it's a little bit iffy because it seems to work in Editor uh, if you want to set a parameter, uh, but then when you package the game, it causes crashes, so don't do that. And we have a similar issue if you wanted to use an evaluator for this because uh, if you bind to these in a task that is trying to set stuff in them, it's going to pass them by value, not by reference. So you can't actually edit the original values on these evaluators. These are only for getting. You can't set these externally. This is one of those things where if you were using C++, it would be trivial to get a pointer reference to these to actually be able to edit them. Blueprint makes it a little bit more difficult. So this is the way that I have found that works to set up cooldowns for state trees. 
And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku.